Hey guys, what's going on? It's the NRL Fantasy Fanatic coming at you with a Supercoach Week 4 update. Coming off a really good Week 3. I do apologize, it's a late video. I know we always upload on the Wednesdays. However, um, I wasn't well this week and I'm still recovering slightly, but I wanted to make sure I put out a video uh, just before kickoff tonight. So if there's any of you out there trying to get a quick double on what I'm doing with my team and the trades I'm making, um, I wanted to give you that quick insight and a bit of a, a, bit of a preview and if you don't catch it tonight, maybe you'll catch it tomorrow. Um, either way, super easy. I should be back to my usual starting time next week, provided I do a speedy recovery. Um, but for this video, because we're only an hour and a half away from kickoff, I'm going to be short, sharp, and to the point. So overall, the team did really well. Uh, really happy with the majority of the players. We scored over 1,000. It looks like a lot of coaches out there scored over 1,000. Now, this is my team post-trades. I did have Will Smith and Bullimore in here as well. Um, and and I didn't have Tyrone or Josh King. Um, but overall, you know, I got over 1,000 points. But I think you'll, I think you'll find a lot of people did. Um, it seemed to be a big scoring week last week uh, for quite a lot of different super coach players out there and different combinations that players had. Uh, Nico Hines seemed to be a super popular option for captaincy. Um, I haven't jumped on that boat and I don't think I will this season. I think um, we know the majority of people have. I think ownership was almost at 50%. If anything, it's going to be over that um, from kickoff tonight, which is uh, exciting to see. You know, people are molding their teams and making all the changes they possibly can to bring him in. Will he go up in value this week? I think 100% he will. I think the break even was something silly like 15 20. So I think for sure he's going to go up. I just feel as though my team, if I'm going to bring him in, um, I've already got all the tools in the shed that I want in the positions that I have. And it'd be somewhat of a sideways trade. Now, there might be a couple of coaches out there that don't agree with me. Um, they're going to say that's that's not right. You always need to bring in the highest fantasy or the highest super coach scorer uh, in order to ensure you've got the best chances of get climbing the ladder as quick as you possibly can. But I don't think he's going to be genuinely a um, top five uh, super coach scorer across the season. I I don't. I think um, he's had some really big games. Um, he's been overall involved. Last week we saw him crack the hundred against Dragons. Dragons were absolutely woeful in defense. Uh, it was a rainy game. He got a lot of kick meters from his own half. Um, he broke through for that try and shrugged off a few tackles. It wasn't a. It wasn't an absolutely amazing try. It was kind of. Um, it was a little bit of. Uh, yeah, a bit of a lack in in defense, in my opinion. But look, hey, I'm sure he's going to score well moving forward. I just don't want to compromise what I'm doing with my team, and that's holding a consistent. Um, keepers that I have and then trading out and trading in the cash cows that I need in order to uh, bring up the price range of my team as a whole so I can fill up with more guns and maybe down the line after five, six, seven weeks if it's completely evident that Nico Hines will be absolutely killing it for the remaining part of the season from um, a good quarter of a season's worth of stats I think I'm going to have to bring him in I just don't want to make that early compromise so for me, um, the trades I brought in this week were um, I kicked out, so I had to do a bit of a unique one where, um, how did I do this initially? So I brought in Tyrone May, I kicked Amon up to the 5'8 spot, and I booted out Will Smith. Will Smith made me about 30, 40 grand, um, and then he had a break even of about 38, and I didn't think he was going to achieve that, so I booted him out for the money that he got me, which is okay. Um, and the other trade I made was Josh King. Um, Bullimore to Josh King, absolutely no-brainer. Josh King's held that starting spot. With Brandon Smith back, are we sure that he'll continue to hold that starting spot? We're not 100% sure. Uh, will he have the minutes that he's had in the first three weeks? Can't confirm that either. Um, but what I will say is that Josh King is probably the cheapest front row forward out there that has been scoring well, and that has kept his starting spot. The fact that he's playing lock, lock generally scores much better in super coach than a forward does. So um, then that's just across the board of all locks versus forwards out there. So I think I I think I'm pretty safe with that. The fact that he's a break even of 32, he's gonna make cash. So we're just looking to make cash early in the season. There are a couple of ongoing concerns for this squad. Uh, the biggest one being Reed Marnie. Is he a keeper? Potentially not. He's bleeding cash. Um, yeah, I mean the quick notes here says his base stats have nosedived by 37%. I Look, I 
I'm not convinced um, yet of trading him out. I, I genuinely think he'll find some form. And to go off three games only, I think is a little early. And that's the same that's the same case and cause and effect I've got for um, Nico Hines is that we've only seen um, a small pool of games so far. We know Reed Marnie is a top is a top scorer. You know when he starts doing those dummy half darts and starts um, kicking from dummy half a lot more. But we just see, need to see more of it. Hopefully he'll come out of his shell, um, and and maybe the coach will get in his ear and tell him to run the ball up a little bit more. Maybe Brad Arthur's turned around and said, "Look, I need my halves. I need Dylan Brown, who's absolutely killing at the moment. Dylan Brown looks like a legit super coach scorer this uh, this season." Maybe he's gotten into his ear and said, look, I need more bore involvement from our halves and our back line. I, I, I don't want to see more runs, and maybe that's what we're seeing here. But um, that could be the truth. It could be that coaches have found him out, or position coaches have found him out, and they're running the, the more bigger men at him, and he's missing a couple of, uh, more tackles than he usually would, which seems to be apparent. Um, maybe he's got a niggle or an injury. I'm, I'm not... Um, look, I'm not... I'm not that convinced to pull him out just yet. I think I'm going to hold him, see what the go is. Just want to make cash, and that's what my two moves have done here. We brought in Tyron May, negative 55 break even. That won't eventuate until the following week because we need three games to be played. Um, Josh King, again, negative 32. And the following trade I'll probably make the next week is bringing in uh, Brody Jones, pending how he goes in the first two weeks. Um, because I've got so many dual positions, it gives me options who to bring him in for. It could be for Kikau if Kikau illustrates that he doesn't have uh, the big games in him. I could push him into firmer spot and and boot out, you know, Eichenberg, Tago, Penasini, May if someone forms an injury. Like there's so many different options that I've got uh, for bringing in Brody Jones. We'll see how that plays out. Maybe Brody Jones won't be the player that he is. We know he scores well when he gets the big minutes and he seems to be holding that starting spot for a while considering Fitzgibbon's out as well as Barnett. Uh, but look, it's a short, sharp, uh, to-the-point vid. Um, I know I had a few questions. The biggest one the, the, the biggest one I had last week was, no, I, it was more of a statement from a few other coaches that don't believe that the, the, me moving out Crichton was the correct move. Um, but I think it's become extremely evident that Crichton is not a keeper anymore. He's moved to the bench. Crichton needs minutes to score. Like he, he's he's not a player that's gonna, he's not a pain ass. He's not gonna come on the field, blow blokes away, <laughs> uh, blow them away off the park, get tackle busts, offloads in a quick hit while the you know while players are fatigued. Angus Crichton's just one of those guys that the more he gets involved, the more likely he is to push out those attacking stats. And the fact that he's on the bench isn't great. I'm happy with to hold. I'm, I'm glad I brought in Nate Butcher. Um, only 308 coaches out there had him last season. Uh, had him since last week. I think if that number's doubled, uh, which isn't that many. Uh, 600 could still go up quite a lot more. I think people um, a little bit um, put off by Butcher potentially going to the bench, having less minutes. Not really sure. But um, guys, I know this is a quick vid. It's not as long as the other ones. Um, I'll be back next week on the Wednesday night, hopefully, uh, once I recover a bit better and uh, we'll do a much deeper dive. Um, if anything, even though I scored over a thousand points, I still went back. I think we're in the top 3,000. We went from like 900 something to 2,900. What that illustrates is just how close it is. Um, if I got an extra 50 points, I'm back in the top 1,000. It's in insane. And that's cap that could be the difference between captaining the wrong player and captaining the player that goes big that week. So, um, to everyone out there, make sure you're making good uh, trades. Don't be throwing your trades away. Um, make sure they're, they've got a fallacy behind them, a bit of a backstory that, that makes sense. Don't just be trading out keepers because they've got one bad week. Um, same as don't be trading in potential guns because they also have one good week unless there's good probable cause. But, Anyway, guys, thank you so much. I uh, appreciate you tuning in. I'll be back the following week. Uh, super appreciate it. And um, hope you all do well. And best of luck. Whoosh.